So, Father, let this be our meditation tonight as we celebrate the gift of your Son. And, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts, that these may be found acceptable and pleasing in your sight. For you alone, O Lord, are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. The Russian novelist Fyodor Dostoevsky once wrote that love is a harsh and dreadful thing. And I think we can agree that this is a strange thing for a writer to say about this strong divine force in humanity that we call love. Aren't we told from our favorite songs and poems that love is purely good and sweet and fun? After all, love is all you need. Love is what makes the world go round. Love is made for you and me. On this second week of Advent, we light what is called the love candle. And if we listen closely to the way that the Apostle Paul describes love for us this evening, we can see that love is not all about the good times that we share with those we care about. It's not about the positive ways emotional love makes us feel. But without qualification, And without any further clarity needed, love is this. It is desiring the ultimate good for our neighbor and acting on that desire for our neighbor's sake, period. Not as long as my neighbor agrees with me on political or social issues. Not as long as my neighbor does this for me so we're even when all this gets squared away but desiring the ultimate good for my neighbor simply because God calls me to service. For Paul, love is meant to bring patience to those who have no patience. Love brings kindness to those who are most in need of showing kindness. And love brings about another way instead of our own chosen way. There's nothing fun about any of these things. No one enjoys being patient or kind to someone who doesn't show you the same generosity. But to the greatest degree, church, this is the love God brings to each of us in the birth of Jesus Christ. When we are impatient, Christ is patient with us. When we are unkind, Christ brings us the kindness that only he can give. In Christ, God shows us true unconditional love by bearing the weight of humanity's shame and carrying it to the cross. And on the cross where Jesus suffered and died for the sins of the world, we can see clearly how harsh and dreadful love can really be. The early church father, Tertullian, tells us that where he lived in his time period, a lot of pagans were able to recognize Christians solely by the way they interacted with those around them. In Tertullian's time, it was common for pagans to show kindness to those within their own religion. The pagans were nice to pagans, but they left other people that weren't pagans or Christians alone. But the Christians, the Christians were taking care of everyone around them, both Christians and non-Christians, widows, orphans, the homeless. And so during this time, pagan priests couldn't help but teach their pupils, look at the love of the Christians. Imitate that love that the Christians are showing other people. Don't be a Christian, they would say, but imitate the love of the Christians. 
We can see now that just a few hundred years later, this same love was able to turn the entire Roman pagan empire to Christ. And if this love can point an entire empire to the Lord Jesus, what is stopping this love from bringing real Christian unity to a country that needs it badly? So in the season, church, as we continue to await the birth of Jesus Christ, may God equip us to love our neighbor in a way that causes others to think, look, look at how they love those around them. And by God's grace, if they ask us, why do we love like this? We can boldly reply, because God loves this world so much that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.